The Stasi collected, stored and analyzed huge amounts of information on its own citizens. And while these 111 kilometers of files here in the Stasi archives are testament to the effectiveness of the Stasi's surveillance apparatus, they pale in comparison to the amount of data collected by the NSA today. But can we even compare the Stasi with the NSA today? It is a question I pose to both Dagmar Hovestedt and Glenn Greenwald. One interesting thing about the, about the potential comparison between the NSA and the Stasi is that if you make it, people will say, oh, the only reason you can make that comparison is because you don't know what it's like to live in a real tyranny like the Stasi. And if you knew what it was like to really live in East Germany, you wouldn't actually be making the comparison. And yet, one of the first people to make the comparison between the NSA and the Stasi after the Snowden revelations began was the German Chancellor Angela Merkel, who grew up in East Germany under the rule of the Stasi. If we look at quantities, you know, what does the Stasi mean in maybe a 21st century context of, of, of NSA, Facebook, Google, you know, digitization of information, it, it really becomes complicated or almost impossible to compare that one-on-one. -on -one. If you just purely compare the data amounts, it looks like what the Stasi did was ridiculous in terms of sheer quantities. But in the end, the power of information doesn't so much lie in the quantity as it also lies in, in the quality and what you, can, what you are allowed to do with it and the controls that are imposed on it. The power of the Stasi originated and was based in this constant sense that there was an unknown, unseen authority that could monitor you at any time. And that's what made it so oppressive, was that the prison in which you were living, even if you weren't behind bars, was nonetheless very potent because it was placed into your mind. And what the NSA had created is the, it had replicated the essence of the system by also ensuring that there's an unseen, unknown authority as you type on the internet or you engage in communications digitally where you can be monitored any time by people you don't know, you don't know the purposes for which they're doing it, and you don't know what they intend to do about it. And there are some differences. Um, Stasi officials, former officials of the Stasi, have pointed out differences, such as the fact that they said, we could not even have dreamed of technology this comprehensive. I think something like 20% of East German citizens had become informants at some point with the Stasi, so they said they were blind on 80% of conversations with people, whereas in the NSA, you can collect virtually all communications and be blind on virtually nothing. I think to look into history gives us a template, gives us a previous experience of how things have been handled. And the mechanisms of secrecy, if you, if you want to put it a little bit more abstract, can be studied through our archive with the ways the Ministry of, Stasi, uh, Ministry of State Security gathered information. So obviously there are parallels, there are mechanisms that keep repeating. So there's something inherent in, in a secret organization and hence there is the comparison or the thought of the Stasi when you look at today's super surveillance with digital means. Um, at the same time, you know, comparison is possible. Anybody can compare anything. The question is, does it help you understand? Does it clarify what's going on then and now? And to just simply equate it or think that because it's more d data today and it's, it's through the technology um, so much more all-encompassing that it's worse, doesn't really clarify anything. It doesn't help you understand what the, the NSA or the Five Eyes are doing today, and it doesn't really help you understand the mechanism of the secret police in a closed dictatorial system. But, at the but, it, but it does help to look and compare. I find understanding the way the Stasi worked and what information can do to society, secretly gathered information, is a great template to, to look at sort of more democratic societies, free societies today, and say, are we behaving the same way? Where do we go wrong in our attempt to protect freedom? Having just spent half a day in the actual archives of the Stasi here in East Berlin, I can't help but be quite overwhelmed. Overwhelmed by the sheer scale and scope of the data collection, the intrusion into the private lives of the citizens of the former GDR. 
But of course, the purpose as to why we came here is to look at how the Stasi compares to the NSA surveillance system that is in operation today. There's two particular figures I'd like you to take away from this. Number one, at the time of the fall of the Berlin Wall, there were 260,000 people employed by the Stasi. That is the rough equivalent of 1.6% of the entire population of the GDR. If the NSA employed the same percentage of the population as the Stasi did back then, then it would today employ 5 million Americans to be working for them. Of course, not 5 million people work for them. It's far less today. So here is the second figure, and that is that the Stasi, over 40 years of its entire operation, managed to accumulate 111 kilometers worth of file space. That's roughly the equivalent of 2,500 football pitches. In a mere five years' time, the National Security Agency of the United States managed to accumulate one trillion times as much files and information as the Stasi managed to accumulate over its history of 40 years. And I think the message to take away from this is how technology and shifts in technology from an analog to a digital age have severely impacted on the nature of surveillance today.